Good evening and welcome to MendocinoTelevision.com and the Skunk FM. Tonight, it's the Fort Bragg Timberwolves' first game of the season. They take on the McKinleyville Panthers and it should be a good ball game. Normally, these two teams meet in a playoff situation, but for both teams, it's the first game of the season. And for the first time in Timberwolves football history, there'll be two games before Labor Day, beginning tonight. I'm Libby Peters. We'll be rebroadcasting these games. That's what you're enjoying right now, each Saturday at 10 a.m. on The Skunk. And you can stream any video that uh, can pick up streaming. You can watch the game at any time, MendocinoTV.com. So, get ready. The JVs have already won. It's 21 to nothing. The Junior Varsity beating the McKinleyville Panther Junior Varsity team. And the Varsity game is up next. We're all set here for Timberwolves football. The McKinleyville Panthers are out on the field warming up before tonight's game. They run a... Uh, their offense is pretty much a spread offense. They've got a lot of different skilled players in offensive positions. Look for them to move the ball offensively or try to against the Timberwolves 4-4 defense. Fort Bragg about ready to come out onto the field. Roy Perkins, now the head coach, has put in a new system. It's the Veer system, and you're going to see it tonight for the first time, and you're going to hear about it on our rebroadcast on the Skunk at 10 a.m. Thanks for joining us here. We're all set. Timberwolves football live action coming up, streaming on MendocinoTV.com and rebroadcast on the Skunk. I'm Lindy Peters. Get set. Football coming up. The captains from the Panthers and the Fort Bragg Timberwolves headed out now to midfield. The Timberwolves out there with Eric Herrian. He wears number 58. Reed Monson wears number 80. Also a co-captain tonight is Tyler Ashby, the quarterback, number two. And number 28 is Zach Smith, running back. Those are the co-captains for the Fort Bragg Timberwolves. McKinleyville, that's uh, John Guffey, lineman number 50. Let's see if I can get the other numbers here. Number 56 is uh, Troy Hillegeist, also a linebacker. Uh, Thomas Gunderson wears number four, uh, co-captain. And uh, difficult from our angle here to tell who that uh, third co-captain is. But suffice it to say that they're all set to toss the coin and we'll see who wins. It looks like uh, the coin toss has been won by the Fort Bragg Timberwolves and they're going to receive this football. So we'll get set now for the Timberwolves and the McKinleyville Panthers coming up. They are going to receive and as you watch, the Timberwolves will be taking the ball left to right across your screen, whatever it is, computer, maybe it's a, an iPhone, whatever you can stream on. Thanks for joining us here at MendocinoTV.com as we move forward in the world of technology here and I'm sort of the dinosaur. I like, like to say we're we're on the trailing edge of leading technology sometimes, but uh, here tonight, uh, this is a first as we're streaming, and this will be available to both McKinleyville and Fort Bragg players to enjoy, and both communities to enjoy as well. So hopefully we'll have a good game. This is a first for us, and it's also the first game of the season for both teams. So stick around. Coming up, the Timberwolves and the Panthers next. We're all set now for the Fort Bragg Timberwolves and the McKinleyville Panthers. The Timberwolves have won the toss. They're going to receive this kickoff with their new head coach, Roy Perkins, took over on Monday. Hasn't had a lot of time to work with the team, but uh, they're going to run an option veer. It'll be a little different look for the Fort Bragg Timberwolves tonight. The McKinleyville Panthers, well coached. They're wearing white with the black helmet. Timberwolves with the purple jersey and the gray helmet. And so here we go. We're all set. Kicking off is Bobby Wainwright for the Panthers. Back to receive for the Timberwolves. As the kickoff is going to be short, it's going to be taken by Jeffries. Jeffries is bumped down at about the 30-yard line after a short return. He was an up man, and there was a short kickoff that time. So the Timberwolves in a fairly decent field position, but not really much of a chance for a return that time. Take over first and 10 at the 30-yard line. We just started here. A little difficulty with the microphone there. Hopefully we've patched that up. Ashby down over center. He's going to keep it around the left side. Not going to get much. And again, in fact, a loss on the play. Okay, third down and uh, about seven to go now. The Timberwolves with the ball still only able to gain a yard in two plays. In fact, uh, a penalty is 
The only reason they are uh, in a yardage situation here is going to be third down at about seven. 9.45 to go here. First quarter action. And Ashby with a penalty flag down, rolls to his right and throws. That ball is caught, but the play was whistled dead. Apparently a motion penalty that time, although Brandon Palmer went out and made the catch. They're going to bring it back. All right, 908 to go in the first quarter. We had a little difficulty getting on the uh, airwaves here. Our apologies for that. In that first series, the Timberwolves received the kickoff on a fourth and long. Zach Smith with a great carry. Got it close to a first down. Or it was, I'm sorry, third and long. Got it close to a first down. The Timberwolves then on a short yardage just went for it and got a first down. So it's the first series. We're in the first quarter. There's no score. The Timberwolves have the ball. And uh, Tyler Ashby's over center right now as we pick up the action. He gives his time to Zach Smith. Smith around the left side. He's got some room. He's across the 40. He's down to the 30. He's down to the 25. Inside the 20 and out of bounds on the far sideline. As Zach Smith almost took it all the way to the end zone that time for the Timberwolves. Fort Bragg over the years has always had a strong sweep and they usually have a pretty good back once they get outside to have the speed to get away and uh, you know, basically that time Smith and there's a penalty on the play being tacked on. It was an incidental five yard face mask on top of that long gain for Smith. So the ball is going to be inside the 15 yard line down to the 13 yard line. About a 45-yard run or 43-yard run that time and a five-yard penalty have given the Timberwolves a golden opportunity in their first series. 8.47 to go first quarter. Ashby give that time to the first man, and he is stacked up at the line of scrimmage. Each time the fullback has taken the ball on that first veer option, it uh, hasn't worked too well. Stuffed up nicely by the interior of the uh, Panthers line. Dexter Gleaton, good size there. Uh, John Guffey, one of the top linemen, has been in on a lot of those uh, stops for the Panthers. He's at uh, left defensive tackle. They have a 4-4, four, four, similar to the Timberwolves, stacked up on defense. All right, Ashby gives to Smith again. He's hit the backfield. There's a fumble. It's picked up by the Timberwolves at about the 18-yard line, so they lost about four yards on that play. Matt Cook, or I'm sorry, for the Timberwolves that time, recovering the fumble, Eric Harry on, Harry on, fine linebacker on defense. The Timberwolves haven't been on defense yet. We're in the first quarter, 7.51 to go. No score. The Timberwolves driving. After that fumble, it's going to be third down and 13. They can get a first down at about the uh, three-yard line. Here we go. Ashby over center. Two backs behind him in the veer. Split. Ashby, fake handoff. Going to keep it. Fumbles the ball again. And this time it's a loss back to the 18-yard line. So once the Timberwolves got inside the 15-yard line, they've managed to fumble twice and move the ball backwards. But this is the first game of the season. It is their first series. And now it's a, a long shot for the Timberwolves. Ball resting out at the 18-yard uh, line. Timberwolves will go for it here in the snap. Pass is blocked at the line of scrimmage and picked up by Smith, who's an eligible receiver. He's still got the ball around the right side, and he gets it down to the 11-yard line. Short of the first down, but a nice play that time. In at quarterback for the Timberwolves, Anthony Costello, who also, uh, with Tyler Ashby, switches off. And uh, that was a fourth down play, so the Timberwolves are going to have to turn the ball over on downs here. 6.47 to go first quarter. The Panthers will take over first and 10 the ball at about their own 11-yard uh, line. So this will be the Timberwolves 4-4 defense now. We'll see how they look. The Panthers with that uh, spread offense that's become so popular, run by so many high schools now. And here we go, Noonan gives to the first guy through, and he's got some room. He bucks his way through. He's across the 20 to the 25 to the 30 to the 40 to the 50. Across to the Timberwolves, 40 to the 30 to the 20 to the 10. He's going to go all the way on the first play of scrimmage. The McKinleyville Panthers score a touchdown. 89 yards, 632 to go first quarter, 6 nothing McKinleyville. Not how you want to start the season. So, uh, electrifying run that time. 
Cameron Tucker. <laughs> Didn't know until they went on. Man. <laughs> so here comes the extra point attempt now by the Panthers. This will be Lane Grace to attempt the extra point for the Panthers. There's the spot. It's down. The kick is up. It is good. And the score now. 6.32 to go. First quarter. It is McKinleyville 7. And Fort Bragg nothing. The Fort Bragg Timber was trail right away 7-0 here in the first quarter. One thing about that spread offense is by its very nature, the defense is spread out. So there's a narrower line of defense against a quick belly play like you just saw there, which uh, once you get past the initial line of scrimmage with the linebackers, the DBs and the safeties pretty much spread out. Uh, if you can find a running lane, you can go a long ways. And especially if you got some speed, you can break away rather quickly. And that's exactly what happened on that first play. So Wainwright will kick off to the Timberwolves. And the kick is taken by Josh LeBeau. Around the right side he comes to the 25, and he is hit and dropped at about the 28-yard line by the first guy to hit him. So the Timberwolves will have it first to 10, their second offensive series now, trailing 7-0. The junior varsity beat McKinleyville. 21-0 was the score in the JV uh, season opener. So the lights are on now. Uh, we had some nice sunlight and a beautiful evening tonight here in Fort Bragg. You can look off in the distance and see a, a bend off in the Noya River as the woods trail back towards the east. Kind of a dusk feel to the air. Getting a little cooler now, and the Timberwolves hope to heat it up right now. Ashby at quarterback. He gives to the first guy, and he picks up this time about five yards. That was Jacob Richards, the ball carrier. Richards, who had been a lineman and has just been converted to a running back, has got good size, but he's new at the position, and it might take him a while to uh, to read blockers and, and sort of get a natural feel to, to being a running back, but uh, he's got good potential. He's got good size. Good carry that time. It's going to be second down and four, gain of six on first down is nice for the Timberwolves now as Ashby is over center. Backs are split behind him. Give to the first guy. That's Richards again as he muscles the way up close to the first down. I think he got it. Depends on where they spot it, but I believe he's picked up the first down out at about the 39-yard line. 5.38 to go first quarter. The Timberwolves trailing 7-0. McKinleyville with the lead. You're watching this on MendocinoTV.com and enjoying it. A rebroadcast on the Skunk FM here. Saturday morning football. The Timberwolves and the McKinleyville Panthers. So here we go. First down now. Ashby with Smith and Richards behind him in the backfield. Two men split out here to the right. Tight end on the left side. Ashby gives to Richards. Richards is held up at the line of scrimmage and knocked for no gain that time. Almost seemed as though McKinleyville was uh, trying to hold him up to see if uh, to knock the ball away and cause a fumble. So it's going to be second down and long. 5.04 to go, first quarter, 7 0. McKinleyville has got the lead, scoring on their very first play of scrimmage. Here we go now, the Timberwolves at about the 39 yard line, their own 39. Again, same formation. Ashby this time on a cross buck, giving it to the second man, Smith. And boy, a tough run, but we do have a penalty in the backfield that time, and a second flag comes down. There might have been a face mask at the end of that play. I'm not sure what the first flag was, but we have two flags on the play. Only a gain of about uh, four or five yards that time. The Panthers start backing up. So let's see what we have here as the officials talk it over. 4.41 to go. First quarter, 7-0 McKinleyville. I'm Lindy Peters here, MendocinoTV.com and the Skunk FM rebroadcast. A motion penalty against the Timberwolves and a personal foul face mask called against the Panthers. So the penalties will offset, and that means we'll just replay the down. It'll be second down and nine and back to the 39-yard line. For legal motion, the penalty on the Panthers was a face mask. Tyler Ashby and Anthony Costello pretty much swap 
at the quarterback position. Ashby's been getting most of the snaps so far tonight. Ashby is just a junior. Not large, but in this particular offense, you don't have to be. He's fast. That you do. All right, Richards and Smith back behind Ashby. And again, two men split out here to the right side. It looked like the tackle may have moved, but no call that time. And back behind the line of scrimmage, Ashby is tackled. And that was Eli Hencher Aubrey who made the tackle for McKinleyville. And nice time for the sideline for the Panthers with a, a big lead and with a stop on that, forcing third and long. They're getting fired up over there right now. Panthers in white, the Timberwolves in their purple home jerseys here. Moving left to right across your screen and left to right across your radio dial. In the shotgun now comes Costello at quarterback. He drops back. He's got some time. Throws over the middle. Overthrows the pass. Open that time just for a second was Todd Waugh, but he was short of the first down, so... It wouldn't have mattered. I don't know if uh, that pass was complete, whether we would have seen him shake a tackler or two. But uh, nonetheless, it is going to be fourth and long. And I would expect the Timberwolves to go back into punt formation. And in fact, they do. 3.46 to go here in this uh, first quarter. 7 nothing McKinleyville. And for the second time, the Panthers will get their hands on the ball. It didn't take them long to score the first time. 89 yards on one play. In punt formation for the Timberwolves, and he loses the ball and then just throws it out of bounds. And a penalty flag is thrown, probably for a legal receiver downfield, because you can't, uh, well, let's see. I, I'm not going to referee the game, but we'll see what the call is here. Uh, you, if you're in punt formation and you throw the football forward and your line is running downfield thinking it's a punt, and that's exactly the call. Uh, you can't do that. That's that's a penalty, and so the Timberwolves will. Uh, it's intentional grounding, pretty much, is is what it is. Um, not a legal man downfield. So, either way, the Panthers will refuse the penalty. That ball, when it was when it went out of bounds or when it was snapped, was back at the 30-yard uh, line. Well, rather confusing play there. I'm not sure. <laughs> well, the, the bottom line is this. McKinleyville has it first down at the Timberwolves 30-yard line. A golden opportunity with excellent field position. Tommy Noonan at quarterback. Behind him is McLean Johnson. And there's the flip to Johnson. He's the man that scored that first touchdown. And he is tackled, tackled nicely in the open field that time by Todd Waugh. Timber was running a 4-4 defense now. About a five-yard gain for Johnson that time. 3.20 to go first quarter now. As the Panthers have the ball, the Timber was 25-yard line. Monson at right end. Coles in the middle there as part of this 4-4. We'll try and set up that defense for you. The give is to the first guy through, and he is... Close to the first down. If he didn't get it that time, that's Thomas Gunderson for the Panthers up close to the 20-yard line. So it'll be... Well, it's not quite a first down. It's going to be third down and short. Ball has to cross the 20-yard uh, line to become a first down. So it's probably two-down territory for the Panthers here. And the way they've been running the football, that probably doesn't daunt them very much so far here early on. This time coming up to take the snap right over center is Noonan. He gives. There's a first down and dropped just shortly after crossing the 20-yard line was Johnson that time. Picked up the first down, though. It'll be first down and 10 for the Panthers inside the 20. 2.25 to go here in the first quarter. 7-0. McKinleyville has got the lead. You're in tune with the Skunk FM rebroadcast of this event. And watching on MendocinoTV.com. I'm Lindy Peters, your announcer, our first game of the year. Noonan now in the shotgun with a new set of downs. Backs up. He's got a lot of time. Strong throw. Incomplete. Overthrown. A pass intended that time for Gage Grace. 
So it'll be second down and 10. Well, they went for the touchdown that time on the very first play, showing a little confidence. Getting back to that defensive line for the Timberwolves. Well, let's get back to this play here as out of the huddle come the Panthers ready to go. Second down and 10. The ball at about the 18-yard line of the Timberwolves. Panthers knocking at the door. Johnson the lone back in the spread. The give is to Johnson, and he cuts through a nice move to the outside. Short of the first down, he's tackled at about the 12-yard line. But a nice move that time got him some room to the outside as that play was designed to go right up the middle. But a nice cut to the right. Got some yardage that time. So this is a big third down play now because, again, if the Timberwolves can hold here or perhaps create a loss, they might uh, create a, a more difficult play call for the Panthers. But third down at about four now at about the 13. Noonan has it. Pitches it back at Johnson. Makes a nice catch of that pitch. But there is a loss perhaps on the play as that ball was strung out nicely. Davis was there. Also for the Timberwolves was Alex Espinoza. And uh, boy, that was nearly a fumble. If Johnson misses that pitch, uh, the Timberwolves probably would have recovered because they spread that out nicely. But uh, he made a nice play on that and sets up fourth down and about four. So here we go. As the Panthers now will try and get a first down, the Timberwolves are going to try and hold them here. This is a big play with about a minute to go here in the first quarter. Noonan will take it out of the shotgun. Johnson behind him. This could be the final play of the quarter, depending on what happens. Noonan's going to sweep to his right. Johnson trying to block him. A beautiful play to take the blocker out that time by Brad Davis. And the Timberwolves have held. Or I'm sorry, Zach Smith. It's Zach Smith, 28. I'll get these numbers straight. It's my first game. But Smith cut down the lead blocker that time and made a beautiful play. Johnson, the lead blocker, is still crouched over for the Panthers there. Slow to get back up to his feet. The Timberwolves have held on fourth down and four. They've stopped the play. It's first down Timberwolves. The ball at the 18-yard line. The change of possession will also stop the clock. 42 seconds to go. Johnson seems to be fine. McLean Johnson who uh, electrified this crowd with his 89-yard run the first time on the Panthers had the ball. In fact, the first play from scrimmage. All right, this will be the final play of the quarter now, I would think, as Ashby's at quarterback. The give and taken down immediately that time is Richards, as once again, Eli Hencher Aubrey was there quickly for the Panthers. And uh, they're going to, I believe, let the clock run down here. They might have to run another play. There's 30 seconds to go at the end of that play. And you've got 30 seconds between plays. So depending on with, when they get this snap off, they might just not have to uh, have another play. They'll, of course, move down to the other end of the field at that point. Fort Bragg trailing 7-0. We're in the first quarter. We're down under 10 seconds to go now in this first quarter. As Aspie comes over center, two men behind him, this time in the I formation. Aspie gives to the second back, and it's Richards as he follows his blockers nicely and gets a decent gain up close to the 20-yard line on the final play of the first quarter. So, with the score, McKinleyville 7 and Fort Bragg nothing. That's the end of the first quarter. I'm Lindy Peters. The end of the first quarter, the McKinleyville Panthers lead 7-0. They play 12-minute quarters in high school football. We're all set to go now as the quarter ended. Fort Bragg has it at their own 18-yard line. Ashby. The give is to the first man through. That is Zach Smith. And he's going to pick up maybe two or three yards. And the Timberwolves... They're going to run out of downs again, it looks like, and have to punt the ball. It's going to be fourth down and seven. Sorry I didn't set up the down for you there. Just getting underway here in the second quarter. If you tuned in late, this is MendocinoTV.com. And if you're listening on The Skunk, this is a rebroadcast of the Timberwolves and McKinleyville Panthers. Friday night football under the lights at Timberwolves Stadium. Timberwolves are set to punt. The punt drives the return man back, and he is downed immediately that time. That is Tanner King. As uh, 46-yard line, the Panthers take over on their own 46. And Fort Bragg, that really had a nice fourth down stop, have to feel good. They didn't really win much field position with the uh, punt there. 
The Panthers still have decent field position as they begin this drive now, leading 7-0. 11-15 to go, second quarter. Here's that spread offense once again. Behind Noonan is the lone back, McLean Johnson. Two men right, two men left. Typical spread. The give, nope, Johnson fakes it, or fakes to Johnson, gives to Noonan. He is tackled that time by Monson, trying to go around the left side, short of the 50-yard line at about the 48-yard line. Called a three-yard or two-yard gain, and second down and eight. The Timberwolves with that 4-4. Most tackles in that type of a defense are either made by the defensive ends or the linebackers. Your two down middle linemen basically, uh, well, if they're really good, they'll make some tackles, but, but oftentimes they're basically just trying to break down the blocking scheme. All right, Noonan pitches to McLean. Johnson stiff arms a man down, trying to get around the right side, and then he's tackled. Nice play by Walker Ferreira that time. Also, uh, Coming in to say hello was uh, Jacob Richards and Anthony Jeffries. So a loss on the play. It's going to be third down now and about eight. Ball back at the 47-yard line. 10.08 to go second quarter. Fort Bragg trailing 7-0. Up to the line of scrimmage come the Panthers, just short of midfield. Noonan out of the shotgun. He rolls to his left. He's got some time. He throws down the sideline. Got a man open. Overthrows him at the 20-yard line. That was Ross Nichols who was wide open. Would have taken a nice touch pass that time, but uh, he was there. Incomplete, so it'll be fourth down, but it shows you that Noonan, who has basically been running this uh, spread offense and uh, they've been keeping the ball on the ground a lot, uh, has got a good arm. That, that ball was just barely overthrown. And a uh, nice touch on that pass, too, as he had to drop it in over the DB. So it'll be fourth down now, and the Panthers are going to have to punt. Zach Smith is back deep, along with Josh LeBou. For the Timberwolves, the punt, it snapped over his head. Here come the Timberwolves. Richards is coming in on him hard. He's still coming in, and the kick is made by the Panthers. It's not going to be very effective. It'll get just across midfield to about the 43-yard line, but you got to give credit to Lane Grace, who uh, eluded uh, Richards that time and uh, somehow got the punt off because Jacob Richards had him in his gun sights that time and was ready to, to make a hit, but uh, that was a smart thing to do. The Timberwolves uh, you might recall earlier in this game, uh, Eric Herrion, the pen punter that time, Herrion tried to throw the football under those same circumstances when it was hiked over his head. So both long snappers have hiked it over the punter's head at least once. Well, it is the first game. All right, 9.41 to go here in the half. And now in at quarterback for the Timberwolves is Anthony Costello. Two men behind him are Richard and Smith. Rolling out is Costello. He's going to put the ball in the air, and Reed Monson was open. Uh, didn't see, didn't look back for that football. It looked like soon enough. The coverage that time was by Nick Lockhart, but Monson has a decided size advantage on that uh, matchup there. Uh, had he turned around and looked for the football, he might have uh, might have had better success on that play. But then again, those type of routes are timing routes, and this is the first game, and uh, maybe. Um, you might look for that later on in the game. It was open. Monson, the tight end, comes to the left side this time. Backs in the I formation. Gives his second man through. That's Smith. Smith with some tough yardage over the left tackle that time. Maybe gained one or two up to about the 44-yard uh, line. Fort Bragg trailing 7-0. 9.24 to go in this first half. First game under the lights tonight. Rebroadcast on the Skunk. And streaming here for you on MendocinoTV.com. So it'll set up a third down and long again, a familiar situation in this first half for the Timberwolves. They haven't really put together a strong offense, uh, offensive series thus far. Back in at quarterback is Ashby. He's going to keep it right side. He's got some room if he can get outside. Gets by the last tackle. He's got a first down. Nice cut back that time. Gets across midfield down to the 40-yard line. Ashby with a nice move that time. He just kind of came to a stop, put the brakes on, watched a would-be tackler slide by, and picked up another five yards. 8.47 to go here in the half. The Timberwolves now trying to sustain a drive. 
That was a big first down pickup there. Is there a cross midfield down to the McKinleyville 38 yard line? Josh Labou comes into the game as Todd Watt checks out. Split out here to the left side. That's Brandon Palmer. And Labou is inside of him. Backs are split behind Ashby. The give is to Jacob Richards, left side. Takes on a would-be tackler and is brought down after about four tough yards that time. Again, the first man there was Eli Henger Aubrey, who's playing a good game defensively for the Panthers thus far here in the first half. 8.05 to go now. It'll be second and five for the Timberwolves. So Fort Bragg with the ball on the 34-yard line of the uh, Panthers will once again have Ashby bring him up to the line of scrimmage. He takes a snap, gives to the second man through. That's Smith. Nice run that time as he picks up first down yardage across the 25 down to the 22-yard line. Smith hit that hole with a good head of steam, and that's what you have to do on those quick plays running out of that veer option, or sometimes called the option veer. So the Timberwolves now with their first drive get two consecutive uh, first downs. They've moved the ball down now to the 32-yard line, 33-yard line in that general area of the Panthers. Here we go. Ashby at quarterback takes a snap, gives to Smith. Smith follows his blockers right side. has got some room inside the 20-yard line, down to the 18, about a five-yard pickup. 7-16 to go now in this first half. Again, McKinleyville scored on the first play from scrimmage that they had Fort Bragg won the toss, got the kickoff, punted, and McKinleyville scored a touchdown 89 yards on their very first play from scrimmage, a run by McLean Johnson, and that, so far, has been all the scoring in this game. Timberwolves trying to mount a drive now, though, have got it all the way down inside the 20, down to about the 17-yard line, where it'll be second down and five. Ashby gives again to Smith. Smith follows his blockers, cuts to the left, gets inside the 15-yard line, close to the first down. He needs to get to the 13-yard line to get to the first down, but Smith is pretty close now. It's going to set up a third and short situation for the Timberwolves. And they're sniffing the goal line now as Ashby gets a play from Coach Roy Perkins on the sideline and trots back out to the huddle. Good blocking by the Timberwolves offensive line has really uh, helped this drive. Oftentimes the line doesn't get the credit. It's hard to tell sometimes who's doing what, but when the running back suddenly breaks through, you know somebody's doing their job. Third and short, here we go. Ashby will keep it himself and stumbles and maybe short. Well, let's see. He, I think he got the first down. It depends on where they mark it. They oftentimes will mark it where your knee hits, but Fort Bragg seems to think they have a first down as Palmer, the wide receiver, sees where they've set the ball, and indeed they do. It is a first down. So the Timberwolves will have it first and 10 at the 11-yard line, trailing 7-0, 5.53 to go in the half. So... Here we go, Ashby over center. Richards and Smith, the tailback behind him. The give is to Richards, and he's got some room. Across the five, inside the... Is he in? I think so. Touchdown, Timberwolves. As Richards goes 11 yards around the left side, and once he broke free, he was running like a pony. And just bucked his way into the end zone, taking that last man with him. I wasn't sure if he actually got across again before his knee hit, but he did. Touchdown, Timberwolves, and they can tie the game up with the extra point. 5.35 to go here in this first half. Harry and now to attempt the extra point. That was a nice drive by the Timberwolves as they uh, took the ball right downfield and scored. There's a snap, the spot. Harrion's kick has got the distance. It is good. We got a tie game. The score with 5.35 to go in the first half. It's Fort Bragg 7, McKinley. Jacob Richards culminated that drive with an 11-yard run. Zach Smith also carried the ball well on that drive for the Timberwolves. They took it right down and tied it up. The key really happened defensively before that. They held McKinleyville on a fourth down twice and uh, or I'm sorry a, a big third down play twice forcing them to punt and 
Once that field position swung after a couple of big plays, the Timberwolves was able to take it in. Their defense is going to have to step it up again here against this tough McKinleyville Panther offense, which so far has been moving the ball pretty well. And uh, we have a good game here tonight. I want to remind you who are finding us on your video devices where you can stream, whether it's your computer or your iPhone, whatever it is you're watching, this is MendocinoTV.com. We'll be featuring these games for your enjoyment throughout the season. The Fort Bragg Timberwolf games, home and away, will be streamed. And if you're listening on the Skunk FM, we will carry the Timberwolves games rebroadcast Saturday mornings at 10 a.m. We're all set to kick off now as uh, Harry and will do the duties. The Panthers send three men deep. 5.35 to go here in this first half. 7-7 seven, seven tie. And here we go as Harry and I'm not sure if that was an onside kick or whether he just squibbed it on purpose, but either way, the Panthers will take it at the 31-yard line as that ball was dived, recovered by the uh, Panthers that time. I don't have a number 30 in my uh, program, but uh, oftentimes the first game of the season, kids will switch numbers. and <laughs> Nonetheless, the Panthers down that kickoff after a, a squib or uh, maybe that was an attempted onside. I'm not sure. All right, here we go. Panthers, a nice run that time as a player hurdles one man and now tries to get to the outside. Speedy run that time by Gage Grace who uh, started to his left, came back to his right. Looked like he was doing the hurdles there for a moment and uh, was finally gathered in and tackled at about the 35-yard line. So only about a four-yard gain, but some uh, excitement on that run. Second down and six. Five minutes, to go, five minutes to go now here in the first half. Noonan at quarterback for the Panthers. Two men either side. He's going to pass this time. He's got some time. Throws it left side. Got a man open in the seam. And he is gang tackled that time inside the 35 or inside the 45 yard line down to the 43 yard line of the Timberwolves. Actually, they mark it down at the 41. Pass complete that time to Tanner King, junior receiver that time. And like I said, Noonan, quarterback, senior for the uh, Panthers, has a good arm. And, and that time, when you have that spread offense, you often, oftentimes will open up seams in the defense. And uh, right down that seam was King that time, and that ball was placed in there nicely by quarterback Noonan. He's over center now, first and 10 at the 41. Give to the first guy through, and he is tackled that time by Harrion, also Richards, but not before he picked up a good five, seven yards. Let's see where they mark it. Down close to the 35-yard line. 426 to go here in this first half. The Timberwolves and the Panthers tied 7-7 and Fort Bragg needs a defensive stop now as the Panthers have quickly moved it down inside Fort Bragg territory. First and 10 at the 35-yard line. Two men split out here to the right. Two men left here in the spread offense. Noonan back to pass again. Got some time. Throws it and this time overthrows his man King. That same pattern in the seam covered that time by the Timberwolves. Brandon Palmer had the defensive coverage that time. So it'll be third down now and five. Timberwolves not able to really mount too much of a pass rush thus far on Noonan who is operating out of the shotgun and again out of that spread the first concern you have is to hold your defensive position and see what's happening before you commit one way or another so uh, it's not just because someone's in the shotgun on this offense does not necessarily mean it's going to be a pass but I suspect it might be here third down and about five Noonan well I'm wrong he gives keep no fake keeps it himself up close to the first down but I don't know if he got it it's going to be short I think of the 30 yard line Walker Ferreira among others helped stop Noonan that time good fake had me faked out to his up back and kept it around the left side but the Panthers will call a timeout with 343 to go here in this first half 
the score. It's McKinleyville 7 and Fort Bragg 7. There's also a Starbucks coffee down there. The pizza is brought in by Round Table and Pizza Factory. So while you're down there, get yourself one of those throwback jerseys. Throwback jerseys for $20 a piece. Purple ones, and there's white ones. Three, two, one. 7-7 seven, seven the score. Timeout on the field. 3.43 to go here in this first half. McKinleyville scored a touchdown, an 89-yard run by McLean Johnson. Fort Bragg answered in the second quarter with an 11-yard touchdown run from Jacob Richards. Both teams converted their extra point kicks, and that's where we stand. 7-7, seven, seven, fourth down and a yard to go as we're back to action now for McKinleyville. Noonan will take it right over center this time for the Panthers as Fort Bragg Gangs up on the defensive line. And there's the give, and there is what looks like a first down. All they need to do is get it across the 30. But, it's boy, I tell you what, Fort Bragg did a good job defensively that time. If he made the first down, it's not going to be by much, but, in fact, he did get it across the 30-yard line. You can see where that ball's marked. Just half of the football got across the 30, but that's all they needed. First and 10 now, 3.37 to go. Ball at the 29-yard line. Let's just call it the 30-yard line of Fort Bragg. This time Noonan operates out of the shotgun, got back split behind him. He's going to roll to his right. He's going to look. He's going to run. And he is clipped and tackled nicely that time by Tyler Ashby, his counterpart at quarterback across the line of scrimmage, but playing safety on defense as he came up from a safety position with a nice tackle that time, but not before... Noonan picked up about four yards, so it's going to be second down and six. 3.05 to go in the half. Fort Bragg trying to hold up defensively here. The ball now at the 26-yard line. Good crowd tonight as uh, we have our first game of the season here at Timberwolf Stadium. Rebroadcast on the Skunk, streaming on MendocinoTV.com. Second down now. Noonan gives to Page in the game again, and he picks up, or I'm sorry, that's Gage Grace in the game. He picks up close to the first down. He picked up about five that time, down close to the 20-yard line. He's good speed and kind of elusive, and uh, Gage Grace fairly diminutive in size, but... Sometimes that could be helpful if you're fast and have got some good moves on the field because uh, you're hard to see behind the, the bigger linemen. And so uh, first down and 10 now for the Panthers. Noonan with the ball. He throws to the end zone. And it's intercepted by the Timberwolves. Picked off that time. Todd Waugh with the interception, and he runs it out to about the five-yard line, and as I said, the Timberwolves needed a big play on defense or a, a stop defensively, and they got it. The Timberwolves will take over first and 10. Panthers went for the end zone that time. A nice defensive play as Waugh stepped in, read the pattern, and picked off the pass. The Timberwolves will have it first down, but they've got the ball at their own five-yard line. 2.14 to go in the half with a 7-7 game here. Fort Bragg needs to try and pick up a first down. It's likely that McKinleyville will use some timeouts here to stop the clock and see if they can get the ball back themselves. Remember, there is no two-minute warning in high school football. 2.14 to go in the half. Ashby at quarterback for the Timberwolves. Deep in his own territory. He gives and bringing the ball nicely to the left side that time Number 28, was Smith. Smith. Couldn't see who it was at first. Picked up some room there. Pick up about four. Second and six now. The ball at the nine-yard line. With the Timberwolves keeping the ball on the ground, of course, the clock keeps ticking, and I'm wrong. The Panthers are not trying to stop the clock. They are continuing to run the clock. So here we go. It'll be second down and six. Fort Bragg just short of their own 10-yard line here just before the half in a tie game, and we have illegal procedure. The Timberwolves that time clearly a mix-up on the snap, that whether the 
ball was snapped too early or somebody moved too early in the backfield. Not sure which, but the net result is going to be a procedure call against the Timberwolves. Moving it back, they can ill afford that and, more importantly, stopping the clock with a minute 33 to go here in this first half. 7-7 tie. So the ball now moved back to about the five-yard line. It's going to be second down and 11. Well, you don't want to make a mistake here. Your defense has just come up with a big play. And offensively, your goal at this point is to get a first down, maybe two. But more importantly, to hang on to the football. Ashby. With the ball, keeper left side, gets outside, gets across the 10, to the 15. He's dragged down from behind at the 20-yard line, or across the 20. Tackled by Tanner King that time. And the Timberwolves do get a first down with a minute 16 to go. The clock is stopped. This does give them breathing room, and perhaps uh, it might raise the coach's eyebrows on the purple side and think, well, maybe we could try a trick play or something here but more importantly when it's a 7-7 tie you're playing at home uh, you're deep in your own territory with this much time in the half 116 I would guess you'd play it fairly conservatively we're going to find out as Ashby comes up with his backs in the I formation and he's going to once again keep it I think he may have yeah I think he kept it or did he give it yep he did but he didn't get much but they're just running the clock out now down to 105, 104, 103, and counting down to halftime in this 7-7 seven, seven tie. Nice evening. The fog has not rolled back in here, as it does sometimes in night games. And uh, weather-wise, a very nice day today and a nice evening for football. And uh, hope you're enjoying our rebroadcast on the Skunk FM. Or if you're watching the streaming on MendocinoTV.com, 37 seconds to go in the half. Ashby gives. And this is probably going to end the half. The Panthers have come up with a stop here, making it third down, but they're, they're making no attempt to stop the clock, which I find surprising. So looks like the clock probably is going to run down. What do we got? No? No penalties? They're just going to let the clock go. So... It's halftime, as we're going to hear that horn sound in just a moment. The score, Fort Bragg 7, McKinleyville 7. Thanks for joining us here on the Skunk FM. I'm Lindy Peters. We're on MendocinoTV.com as well. And this is a rebroadcast you're enjoying. It is now halftime. The score, Fort Bragg 7, McKinleyville 7. All right, we're all set to begin the second half here momentarily. 7-7 the score. The Fort Bragg Timberwolves and the McKinleyville Panthers. The first game of the year. We're at Timberwolves Stadium. Streaming on MendocinoTV.com and rebroadcast on the Skunk FM. Lindy Peters with the action here. The first play of the game for the McKinleyville Panthers. McLean Johnson galloped 89 yards for a touchdown. And the Timberwolves took a while to answer, but in the second quarter, it was Jacob Richards who scored an 11-yard touchdown to tie this game up. And the Timberwolves with a couple of great defensive plays. The defensive play of the game so far for Fort Bragg was Todd Waugh, who intercepted the McKinleyville Panthers' bid for a touchdown towards the end of that first half and kept the score at 7-7. We're at Timberwolves Stadium. Getting set for the second half here. First game of the year, the McKinleyville Panthers and the Fort Bragg Timberwolves. 7-7 seven, seven the score. As uh, Fort Bragg, who had won the initial coin toss and elected to receive, will be kicking off as we begin the second half in a 7-7 seven, seven tie. Both teams have uh, actually played pretty well considering this is the first game. Haven't been too many of those mistakes. The long snappers maybe could have used a few more hours of practice. Each team's long snapper has snapped it over the punter's head. Although in either case, it didn't cost the team uh, too much because it didn't result in a turnover and it didn't result in a, a score for the other teams. So uh, given the fact that it's the first game of the year, have been pretty mistake-free overall. Pretty penalty-free, too, I might add. Uh, one of the drawbacks of uh, our 
short staff here as we produce these games is the fact I don't have stats. I don't have a, a stat person, a spotter, those sort of things that, that come with a, uh, a, a complete staff on a, on a sports broadcast. But we're making do with what we have, and uh, we hope you're enjoying the fact that we're able to provide some community service and some exciting local action here, both streaming and on the radio. All right, Harrion. Set to go. There's the kickoff, and we begin the second half. Ball's taken at the 10, up to the 15, to the 20, to the 25. Cut back at the 25. This kid is fast to the 30, to the 35. Tries to get outside, and he's course collar down at the 43-yard line, and there's a penalty as you can't do that. Jacob Ritzer grabbed him by the back of the uh, shoulder pad, so there'll be extra yardage. Gage Grace, another fine open field running performance on that kickoff return the ball came out to the 40 and they haven't see the penalty marks it up to the 41 so good field position for the Panthers beginning the second half they have it first and 10 the ball at their own 41 yard line this time Noonan back by himself in the backfield got a tight end Man goes in motion that time. That's McLean Johnson. The throw is out there, and he is hit immediately. And a penalty flag down. Zach Smith that time with the hit. Johnson gets up after being hit pretty good, but I believe the penalty might be, well, let's see what they say. Personal foul against the Timberwolves. It might have just been the celebration after the hit, or it might have been they hit him a little high that time. I'm not exactly sure why they called that personal foul. And when you're this far away and you don't have the referees mic'd like they do in professional and college football, uh, we don't really know exactly what caused the infraction. We just know what the infraction itself was. So suffice it to say that that uh, loss on the play is turned in after the penalty to a gain. It's going to be first down and a yard to go. The ball all the way across midfield after the penalty down to the Timberwolves 49 yard line. 11.31 to go, 12 minute quarters here in high school football. Noonan this time will take it directly over center and does that delay a game? We have a penalty flag go up before the ball is snapped. And it is, in fact, delay a game. Even after a penalty, you've only got 30 seconds from once that ball is spotted and the referee uh, gives you that whistle blow on the, the arm. There it goes, it's indicating the clock spins around, and now they've got 30 seconds to get this playoff. Last time they didn't, so the penalty now makes it first down and let's call it a long five yards. Ball back across midfield, though, more importantly, down back at the 46-yard line of McKinleyville. <laughs> Noonan fakes the pitch, gives instead, and ball carrier that time is Thomas Gunderson, and he picks up close to first down yardage. Number four, Thomas right about midfield is where they're going to spot it, so it'll be second down and one. 7-7 seven, seven tie, 10-37 to go. We're in the third quarter. McKinleyville and Fort Bragg here at the Timberwolves Stadium. Good crowd for the first game of the year. Panthers come up to the line of scrimmage now. Noonan been a quarterback the whole time. He'll take it over center on the short yardage and he'll give to the first guy and he will get the first down as he comes out through his blockers nicely. Gunderson picking up the first down across midfield down inside the 45 yard line down to about the 43. So it'll be first and 10 McKinleyville on the move with their first possession here in the third quarter. 7-7 seven, seven tie. The Timberwolves defense, other than giving up that one long play, has, has played pretty well here tonight. Against this oftentimes confusing spread offense. Noonan rolls right, throws across, nobody there, and he is hit right after he throws that time by Jacob Richards. And a mix-up as that pass was intended for, looked like the closest guy there, was Todd Waugh, who 
already has one interception here. Nine fifty-one to go here, third quarter. As McKinleyville has the ball now at their at the Fort Bragg forty-four yard line, second down and ten. Noonan in the shotgun, fakes, takes it to the left side. He's got first down yardage and more as he stiff arms his way down inside the thirty-yard line, down to about the twenty-five. And a nice run by Noonan that time as he faked the belly play that time, kept it and fought for a lot of that yardage on his own. Tough run for a quarterback, and that's first and 10 for McKinleyville. All about the 27-yard line. 9.43 to go here, third quarter, as the Panthers come up. They split three men out here to the right, one man to the left. Johnson behind Noonan, a give to Johnson. He's got some room. A flag goes down that could be holding. Two flags go down. Three flags go down. When three officials see something and they all throw their penalties, one could say it could have been pretty obvious. And the Panthers are marching back immediately, and that's good news for Fort Bragg. Harrion discusses it with the official there, and holding is the call. So the ball will go back, and this is a momentum breaker, perhaps, or at least a, a, a shift in the momentum for the Timberwolves here on that penalty as it's going to go all the way back to the 37-yard line, and it's now going to be first down and about 20 for McKinleyville. 9.29 to go here, third quarter. Basically just kind of underway here as the Panthers have taken this opening kickoff in the second half and retained possession so far the entire third quarter, which, like I said, is only about three minutes old. All right, Noonan in the shotgun this time, first and long. Man comes in motion, and Noonan's going to throw. Rolls to his right, and a little short pass that time taken by Johnson over the right side, and he runs right over Zach Smith that time. And another penalty flag, I think, is down near in the backfield, but this one is being discussed with the Panthers, but they might just be calling the kid who called, who had the penalty call is blocking below the waist. It's called against the Panthers. The man who committed that, uh, Dan Bobolot, a fine offensive lineman for the Panthers that time, had the official explaining to him what he did that was uh, illegal, and so back we go. As the Zebras will mark it back against the Panthers, taking it back, not all the way to midfield, but I believe this is a 10-yard penalty, which should take it out to about the 47-yard line. See where they mark it. Now it's 15. My mistake, it is across midfield. That's a 15-yard penalty, blocking below the waist at the high school level. And that, my friends, now makes it. Well, let's see. About 34 yards to go. First and 34 yards to go for the uh, Panthers here. 8.48 to go, third quarter, and most of the action so far has been from the officials here in this third quarter. So now the Panthers come out. Noonan gives it. It's Johnson, and he is hit. Nicely that time by Jeffries, initially finished off that time by the rest of the Timberwolves, but Jeffries responsibly for the first hit that time, right at about midfield, as Johnson started to gain a little bit of uh, speed. Boy, McLean Johnson doesn't start off fast, but he's big and he's tough, and once he gets in the open field, he can... Uh, Definitely be a tough guy to bring down. That was a big hit that time, delivered by Anthony Jeffries. And Johnson goes to the sideline, and he's been playing most of this game. So he's out. He's not in the backfield right now. Second down and long. Noonan's going to roll to his left. He's got some time. Throws, got a man open. He drops the football right at about the 28-yard line. Number six, Tommy Noonan pass. Ross Nichols. Pass is intended to Buddy Ross Nichols. Nichols. That'll bring up third. Had that ball 
foot right on the money, but uh, unable to hang on. And so it's going to be third down and about a little over 30 yards to go. That stops the clock. This has been a, a long series for McKinleyville time-wise, but on the clock not that much time has expired due to the penalties and the, and the pass plays that have fallen incomplete. When the clock stops on each of those occasions, not much time elapses. So here we go. Noon and third and long. Fakes a pass and is going to try and run, and he's not going to get anywhere. Tackle by Harry on that time. Looked like Monson got a piece of him as well. And it's going to be fourth and long, and this sets up a punting situation for the Panthers. Last time they tried to punt again, that ball was snapped over the punter's head. Now the clock is running. About seven minutes to go here in this third quarter. Labou is back deep along with uh, Davis, or Smith that is. For the timber was Zach Smith and Josh Labou. This time the snap is there and the punter's away. And it takes a Fort Bragg bounce backwards. Have to watch, make sure that doesn't hit one of the Timberwolves. It's down by McKinleyville at about the 28-yard line where it'll be first and 10, Fort Bragg. 6.45 to go, third quarter. 7-7 seven, seven tie. We do have a penalty flag. Let's wait and see what this is all about. It looks like it occurred after the change of possession, so it'll be the Timberwolves football. It's just a matter of where they're going to spot it, I believe. And uh, they're going backwards. Well, I had mentioned as we began the second half that for the first game of the season there weren't a lot of penalties, but that certainly changed, didn't it, in the last five minutes? And one penalty after another. And sometimes in the high school football level, a penalty takes a while to figure out here. So let's see what we got. It almost seems as though the officials themselves aren't quite sure. But at any rate, the Timberwolves are going to keep the football following this punt. And it is a personal foul against the Timberwolves. And that's going to really change the field position entirely. They're going to have the ball inside the 20-yard line down at the 17. First and 10, 7-7 tie, third quarter, 6.45 to go. This is a rebroadcast of the game on the Skunk FM and streaming on MendocinoTV.com. I'm Lindy Peters at Timberwolves Stadium, under the lights. So we're all set to go now as Ashby will be over center. Behind him, he's got Smith. The up back is Richards. And he gives to Richards as he tries the right side and has stacked up that time at about the 20-yard line. Gain of about two. It'll be second down and eight. Richards scored an 11-yard touchdown run in the second quarter. That's been the only mark on the scoreboard for the Timberwolves. McLean Johnson with a long run for McKinleyville. That's been their only score. Well, we have, other than the penalty, the flurry of penalties, been a pretty exciting game here tonight. So it'll be second down and about seven. Ball 20, Ashby gives. This is Smith coming through. He gets across the 24-yard line, up close to the 25. Picks up maybe two or three. It's set up about a third down and four for the Timberwolves here. In their own territory, ball spotted at about the 25-yard line, 24-25, just short of the 25. Got about 5.37 to go here in this third quarter. Tie game. And a big play for Fort Bragg now. They need to get a few first downs, if nothing else, get out of this field position in their own territory. And we have a whistle here stopping action. And we have a timeout. The Timberwolves have called a timeout. Roy Perkins, the coach, getting out on the field. 5.23 to go, 7-7. We'll see what this timeout is about and pick up the action. 5.23 to go, following the timeout, third down and about four for the Timberwolves, the ball just short of their own 25-yard line, Ashby over center. 
pitches outside to Richards. Got one man to beat. Beats him. Cuts outside. Gets across the 35. To the 40. To the 45. To the 50. To the 40. To the 30. Tackled at the 24-yard line. Number 28, Zach Smith. At Zach Smith, the ball carrier that time. I think I had Richard as the ball carrier, but my bad on that. As he came out, I got excited and followed the action, but Smith that time got the pitch. And that's one of the few times on this Veer option that the Timberwolves threw that quick pitch. And when you're running inside the tackles and suddenly you pitch it outside, that was a good, clearly Coach Roy Perkins saw something. He called a timeout, he sent that play in and boy did it work. All They're down now inside the 24 yard line. And it'll be first and 10 for the Timberwolves, 5-11 to go here in this third quarter as Ashby brings the team up. He'll take the ball over center and gives it to the second man, that's Jacob Richards that time, ran into Smith, the first guy coming through that time, but thank goodness there wasn't a fumble. Richards picked up about four down to about the 20 yard line. It'll be second down and six. Second and five for the So Fort Bragg with the chance now to take the lead deep in the Panthers territory right here. Their second good drive of the game. First one culminated in a touchdown. Ashby gives it to Richards. Richard is stopped right at the line of scrimmage this time. McLean Johnson, who left the field on offense for a few plays back in and on defense, helped make that tackle. Along with him that time was Eli Hencher Aubrey, who's had a great game so far for the Panthers, as I mentioned before, on defense. Four minutes and 13 seconds to go here in the third quarter. It's going to be third down and about five now. Ball at the 20-yard line. Fort Bragg passing game hasn't shown itself too much here tonight. But in the game at quarterback this time is Anthony Costello, who oftentimes comes in and passing downs. He steps up to the line of scrimmage. He's going to roll to his right for a moment. Throws, got a man open. Knocked away at the last second. Good defensive play that time for the Panthers' Thomas Gunderson. The pass was intended that time for Todd Waugh. And that ball was on the money. A nice pass, but a beautiful play by Gunderson to knock it away by the Panthers, or that would have been a touchdown. So it's fourth down of the 20-yard line in a tie game. It looks like the Timberwolves are going for it. And once again, it looks like remaining in at quarterback will be Anthony Costello. Both quarterbacks, Costello and Ashby Juniors for the Timberwolves. Costello now in the shotgun. Palmer split out left and whistles stop the action. So penalty flag and we got a few plays in without a flag, but this this is a crucial point in the game. Fourth down, about six yards to go. The Timberwolves at the McKinleyville 20-yard line and a procedure call against them is going to move it back five yards and make it fourth down and ten now. And Ashby is going back in at quarterback. Josh LeBeau is in the game for the Timberwolves as they check in. And Jacob Richards checks out of this particular formation. So here we go. Ashby at quarterback's got LeBeau back there with him in the backfield. Two men split out here left. That's Smith that comes in motion. They fake a pitch to him. Ashby's going to keep it left side. He's got a little room. Is he going to get the first down? He is. Nice move. He's inside the 10, down to the seven yard line. As the Timberwolves once again come up with a great play, and Ashby just gets to the first down, I believe. Let's see where they mark this. That is a first down. They faked a pitch to Smith, who came in motion left to right, and with the entire team uh, blocking scheme going towards the right, Ashby takes off to the left. He had a couple of blockers that slid off that side with him and got enough for the first down. Well, that was a big play. First and 10 now, or first and goal, that is. The ball at the eight-yard line now for the Timberwolves. They try and take the lead. There's the give to Richards, and he bulls his way up to the five. It'll be second down and goal. Under three minutes to go here. We're in the third quarter, 7-7 game. The Timberwolves and the McKinleyville Panthers. 
Fort Bragg on a couple of plays this drive have come up big. That fourth down play, and there was a third and long also on this drive that uh, was a big play. So the big play has been prominent in this low-scoring game. Second and goal from about the five-yard line. Ashby over center. He gives to Richard, and he is knocked back. I thought I heard players yell fumble on the field, but I don't. I didn't see the ball pop out, and Richard did not fumble. He held on to the ball, which is important here, but no gain. So it'll be third down and goal, and the ball outside the five-yard line now at the six-yard line. Might have even been a loss on that play. Down to about two minutes now in this third quarter. This is a real opportunity now, and it's probably four-down territory, so the Timberwolves have two plays to go mistake-free and six yards. Ashby pitches to Smith. He's rolling to his right. He's get outside. He dives. Touchdown, Timberwolves. And Fort Bragg takes the lead, 13-7. to I almost looked like the halfback option that time, and I think that kept the safeties and defensive backs back in the end zone from coming up to try and meet that play. And by the time they did, Smith had the angle and with his speed, hit the outside and dove for the end zone. Touchdown, Timberwolves, 141 to go here in the third quarter. They take the lead, 13-7, to and will now attempt the extra point. Perrion to attempt the extra point for Fort Bragg who for the first time tonight have the lead. There's a snap, the spot's down, the kick looked like it was blocked almost, but it's good. It left his foot a little funny that time, but it got through the uprights and that's all that counts. So with 1.41 to go here in this third quarter, Fort Bragg has taken the lead. It's Fort Bragg 14, McKinleyville seven. 1.41 to go third quarter and we're all set for kickoff now. The Timberwolves Harrion tees it up and kicks it off. Another squibber kick coming around here to the left side, and it's uh, picked up by King, and he is immediately dropped at about the 25-yard line. So clearly that's a design for the Timberwolves to kick off and try and keep the Panthers from a clean return. And one never knows if you can't pick up that squib, but... Fort Bragg gets to that ball first. They, of course, would have possession at that time. So, anyway, so far tonight it's worked. The Timberwolves have kept McKinleyville from getting a good kickoff return, that's for sure. They'll start at their own 25, first and 10. Fort Bragg leading 14-7, 135 to go here in this third quarter. Noonan over center. And he'll pitch it back to McLean Johnson, and the Timberwolves are there to greet him, but he gets through one tackle, but he still dropped for a loss that time. And a penalty flag goes up again after that play, and I don't know if uh, there's over-celebration going on or what out there, uh, but it seemed to come in after the play was over. Unsportsmanlike conduct against Fort Bragg, and I believe there's now a rule in high school football, North Coast League section here, that prohibits you from excessively celebrating defensively and I'll opine on that for a moment I think that's a good thing I think what Mark Gastineau started back there it was an embarrassment to defensive players everywhere to celebrate a sack to celebrate a big tackle on every play at every moment isn't right and shouldn't be done that's just my opinion if it's the Super Bowl and you're Danny Buns and you stop a guy on fourth down and your team's gonna go on to win the game beat your chest like Tarzan that's a big play. But everybody else, that's your job. All right, I'm off the soapbox. We're back to action. First and 10 now after that play for McKinleyville. What would have been a loss. They give it to Johnson. And this time he starts left, comes back over the middle and picks up good yardage. And here comes another penalty flag. Well, I certainly spoke too early when I said first game of the season we don't have too many penalties because uh, we've pretty much had nothing but penalties since and what is this one now holding and it's against McKinleyville so 10 yards back the other way and Fort Bragg is going to decline 
Oh, I see. There were two penalties. One against McKinleyville and one against Fort Bragg. They're offsetting, so they'll be replay that down. 1-12 to go third quarter. Fort Bragg leading 14-7. This is a rebroadcast on the Skunk and also streaming right now on MendocinoTV.com of uh, tonight's game. Hope you're enjoying it wherever you might be listening. Both teams, other than the penalties, are putting on a good performance for the fans who are here tonight. All right, Noonan takes it from McKinleyville, gives it to Johnson, and again, he bowls his way over the left side. The ground caused that fumble as he gets just across the 40-yard line, so it'll be second down and about seven, and that should get pretty close to the end of this third quarter with Fort Bragg leading 14-7. to seven. We're down now about 40 seconds and counting down. There'll be time for one more play here. 40-yard line of the McKinleyville Panthers as they bring up their offense. Noonan at quarterback the entire time. McLean Johnson behind him. The spread offense, two men left, two men right, two flankers, two wide outs. Noonan looking to his right, throws. That ball is caught and dropped. It would hit the ground first. I'm sorry. The whistle blew and the pass was intended that time for Cameron Tucker. But, uh, well, I'm sorry. He did catch it. And I guess because he was, he hit his knee on the ground right after he caught it, they marked, that's why the whistle blew. So a little confusion there. Bottom line is this, it's going to be third down and three. When we come back, it is the end of the third quarter. The score, Fort Bragg 14, McKinleyville 7. Fort Bragg leading 14 to 7. Noonan. Got some time. Throws over the middle. And the ball is knocked away. Coming up with a big defensive play that time for the Fort Bragg Timberwolves. Number six, Tommy Noonan's pass was incomplete. And, of course, there, there is no 88 in the program. So, number 88, if you're listening, you just made a great play for, for Fort Bragg. On the 45-yard line. Well, it is, like I said, the first game of the season, so some of the players have changed numbers. Some of them that started out as uh, linemen have become running backs. Jacob Rick Richards an example of that, and some aren't in the program, but sorry about that. So, McKinleyville goes for it on fourth down. No, they don't. They're in the punt formation. They're going to punt it away, trailing by a touchdown, or are they? There's a snap. They do punt it. Back deep, signaling a fair catch for the Timberwolves is Ashby. And so Fort Bragg will have it first and 10, the ball at their own 20-yard line. We're in the fourth quarter now, just 12 seconds in, 12-minute quarters, 11.48 to go in the game. Fort Bragg leading 14-7. to seven. All right, let's see what the Timberwolves could do offensively here now. Ashby with the give to Smith that time, and he is stacked up and dropped Zach at about the 21-yard line. No gain on the play. It'll be second down and 10. Thomas Gunderson. No gain on the play. It'll be second and 10 for the Timberwolves on the 21-yard line. All right, here we go. Second down now for the Fort Bragg Timberwolves. The ball at their own 21-yard line, leading 14-7. to In this fourth quarter, they need to take some time off the clock, and they need to move the ball and move the chains, get a couple of first downs here, and they've got the lead. There's Ashby faking the pitch, instead spinning, keeping the ball, running for maybe a yard or two. It's going to be third down number and long two, at about Tyler the 22-yard line. Carrier. Tackle made by number 33, McLean Johnson. Gain of two on the play. It'll be third and eight for the Timberwolves. We're doing some rapid camera work here just to, you know, try and be hep and cool. If you're watching on our streaming here, Mendocino tv.com on the radio that made no sense but we just adjusted our position so that we wouldn't pick up that pa announcer so loudly over our microphones 10 31 to go in the game fort bragg leading 14 to 7 but this is a big play third down and eight the ball at their own 24 yard line palmer splits way outside here to the right 
Ashby at QB, and he's going to keep it. Comes around the right side, and he is going to be stopped. They try and strip the football, but they can't get it away, and instead the Timberwolves with fourth and long are going to have to punt, and they're going to have to turn it over to their defense here and hope that they can hold the Panthers. 14-7, Fort Bragg leading. Well, this is a time when your long snapper can't afford to snap it over the punter's head. Back to punt for the Timberwolves is Herion. Back to receive is Tanner King for the Panthers. There's the snap. Herion gets the punt away. It's end over end. It's a short kick. And right away, King is hit, but he eludes him and eludes another tackle. He's trying to get outside. Reed Monson strips him up from behind near midfield, or King may have gotten away that time. A nice punt return for the Panthers, setting him up with 9.27 to go in the game, trailing 14-7 to with a first and 10 across midfield. Now, well, once again, the defense now is going to have to step it up here. 14 to 7, Fort Bragg leading with 9.27 to go in the game. Again, a rebroadcast on the Skunk FM. I'm Lindy Peters. Thanks for joining us. Streaming on MendocinoTV.com. As the Panthers see if they can bring a little excitement to the field. Noon in the shotgun. There's a snap. He rolls to his left. He's going to throw. He's got time. A little touch pass incomplete. Intended that time for Gage Grace, who has shown some real promise once he gets the ball in the open field tonight. He hasn't scored a touchdown yet, but he is a elusive runner out there once he gets his hands on the football in the open field. So it'll set up second and ten. The clock stops. Just a few seconds tick down on that play. 9.24 to go in the game. 14-7, Fort Bragg leading. Ball at the Timberwolf 47-yard line now as Noonan again in the shotgun. Three men split out here to the left now. And there's a penalty flag. The give is to the lone back, McLean Johnson, as he fights his way up to about the 45-yard line. I believe that penalty might be against the Panthers for being offsides, but let's wait and see here. They're looking, I think, for the Timberwolves captain. And indeed, it looks like it's going to be against the Panthers because the Timberwolves have accepted a penalty and it's a legal procedure is the call, not offsides. The, the lineman threw that flag. Sometimes when, when you're running the spread, you're so far out there, it's hard to tell if you're on the line of scrimmage or maybe over it. So it kind of looked like that's what the call might have been. But it, instead, it's a legal procedure. The... The good thing is it's five yards in the right direction. The Panthers now will have it second and 15. Ball back across midfield at their own 48. Noonan in the shotgun. Two men split left, two men right. There's a quick pass to King. King gets it in the flanker position left side, breaks one tackle, then gets across midfield down to the 45-yard line, close to where they were just a moment ago. 8.55 and counting down left in the game. Fort Bragg leading 14-7 as the Panthers... Huddle up. It's going to be third down and about six. They need to get to about the 38-yard line of the Timberwolves. They have the ball on the 44-yard line. So it's a big third down play, but at this point in the game and across midfield, it's no doubt four-down territory for McKinleyville. Again, two men split left, two men split right, and a whistle stops action here. Official comes forward. Now we, for some reason, they stop play. Timberwolves look a little confused on defense right now. They don't look like they're ready for the snap. And there it is. And, and you know, that really was the time. Timberwolves have called a timeout. But the officials that time looked like they didn't quite have control of the game. Like, they stepped in there for a moment. And are we going to, you know, all, McKinleyville quickly snapped the ball. Fort Bragg was in complete disarray on defense. So, Coach Perkins quickly did get a timeout, and uh, that's a good thing because those situations sometimes could be disastrous. If you're completely, you know, unorganized on defense, looking at your sideline and the coach when the ball snapped, that could be an easy score for the other team. I think they may have had too many men on the field. There was some confusion there. I'm not sure what. But the Timberwolves are huddled up around Coach Perkins right now trying to protect this 14-7 lead, 8-18 left in the game. 
We want to thank you for joining us here on our rebroadcast on the Skunk FM and also for streaming with us on MendocinoTV.com. Timberwolves football will have all the games for you streaming and rebroadcast on the airwaves the following day. So some of you listening know how this game turned out. I don't. 8.18 to go as the Panthers come up to the line of scrimmage following that timeout. Third down and about six. Again, they need to get to about the 38-yard line of Fort Bragg. There's a snap. Noonan pitches to the quick running back from the right. He's going to get the first down and more, and I can't get his name straight. Gage Grace does it again. A little quick pitch, and I told you, you get that guy in the open field, look out. And he gets a big first down to keep this drive alive. Inside the 35, down to the 33-yard line, first and 10, 8-11 to go in the game. And again, when the first down hits and the chains move, they stop the clock, now they start it again. But we have to keep our eye on the clock because that is perhaps determining factor. There's still plenty of time left in this game. It's Fort Bragg has not shown... Uh, a consistent offense to where you get confidence if McKinleyville scores they can just go right down and score and, and win. There's enough time for both teams to have a chance to score. All right, first and ten for the Panthers and once again the flag flies. This is getting almost preposterous. It's too much time again against the Panthers. That's a five-yard penalty or no, it's timeout. No penalty. I guess their coach realized they were going to get penalized for delay a game. So instead, a timeout is called. So while this fourth quarter could take a while, there's still 7.40 to go in the game. 14-7, to 7, Fort Bragg has a lead. Following the timeout, McKinleyville has a first down at Fort Bragg's 33-yard line. 14-7, to 7. Fort Bragg with the lead. McKinleyville trying to answer. Noonan with the snap. There's a give. There's a big gainer close to 10 yards that time as running right up the middle was Thomas Gunderson and Gunderson takes it down to about the 21 yard line. I believe he's going to be a little short. Nine yard gain second and one. Clock keeps ticking now. 7.21 to go in the game. The ball to 23 yard line of Fort Bragg. Short yardage situation. Noonan takes a snap and the whistles stop the play. Sorry to sound a little uh, <laughs> disdainful, but you can't really get a flow going offensively or defensively if there's a penalty almost every play. You just can't get a flow going announcing the game either. All right, that's a procedure call against the Panthers, five yards back. He's second down now and five yards rather than a, a short yard. 7.04 to go in the game. As the clock now continues to run following the penalty. Noonan will be in the shotgun. Gunderson is back there with him now. And there's that same play to the left side, flipping it to Gage Grace. And this time he is dropped in the backfield. A nice tackle that time by Josh Labou. And a loss. So it's going to be third down and about nine. It's one of the few times they've tackled Grace for a loss of yardage. And the clock keeps going down to six and a half minutes to go in the game. 14-7, Fort Bragg leading at Timberwolf Stadium here tonight. First game of the season for both teams. Panthers with that spread offense. Send two men spread out to the right. Ross Nichols out here left. Now three men out to the right as Gunderson joins the other two. Noonan from the shotgun has Johnson with him back there again. Noonan back to pass. He looks. He gets some pressure. He gets out of it. He rolls to his left. He's going to run. And there's a clip. No call as Noonan is brought down and blocked. Looked like from behind was Josh Labou. And he's a little slow getting up, but he's up now. A good gain that time by Noonan, but it's not going to be enough. It's going to be fourth down and three, 5.39 to go in the game. The ball down to the 25-yard line. 
I got to realize I'm not a referee, and maybe that wasn't a, a clip, but those of you that watched it or are watching it on the streaming right now may may agree. <laughs> it was close as Labou came up there to make that play. He was blocked from the side. All right, fourth down and about two for the McKinleyville Panthers at the Fort Bragg 25-yard line, 14-7. Big play here. Noonan will take it right over center. Gives it to the first guy through, and he has dropped, and I don't think he got it. It depends where they mark it, but I believe for the third time tonight, the Timberwolves have held on a fourth down play, and that was the possibly the game. There's still plenty of time, 5.03 to go. They did. The Timberwolves' defense has held. It's first down, Timberwolves at their own 24-yard line. And we're down to about five minutes to go in the game. So Fort Bragg leading 14-7, clearly in the driver's seat here as uh, their offense gathers around the coaching staff and gets ready here to try and crank out some first downs. That's what they need to do. Keep it on the ground, crank out some first downs. If the clock stops, it's only for a penalty or because the other team has called a timeout. But right now, the clock is your friend. Timberwolves will huddle up. Palmer splits out to the left. Todd Waugh splits out right. Richard and Smith back behind Ashby. Tight end Monson on the right side. And right up the middle goes Ashby. And he breaks one tackle, tries to get to the outside. Not quite. But he does pick up about five or six yards up to the 30-yard line. The clock is under five minutes. And Ashby, without a lot of size, to his credit, pretty tough and pretty elusive out there on the field when he's got the football. And that's something you want to see in your quarterback. 4.33 to go in the game as the clock goes down now. Splitting out to the right is Palmer. Waz out left. The Timberwolves need to get this playoff before the clock expires. They give to Smith. Smith, left side, going to be short of the first down. Picked up maybe a yard or two. Number 28, Zach Smith. Involved. Eli Hencher Aubrey once again. And he's a little groggy getting up there. Like maybe got left shoulder dinged up a little bit. He's going to stay in. So it's going to be third down and about three now. The Timberwolves need to get a first down here. 3.57 to go in the game. They lead 14-7. to seven. They need to get the ball to the 39-yard line. I'm sorry, the 34-yard line to get a first down. If they cross the 35, they've got it. Here we go, Ashby. The give is to Richard, and he's stacked up immediately. He's not going to get the first down. It's going to be fourth down, and the Panthers are going to get the football back. Fort Bragg cannot make a first down, and they're going to have to punt the ball away. And once again, their defense is going to have to stand up and hold on to this 14-7 lead. Harrion will be the punter. King back to receive for the Panthers. Ball is spotted at the Fort Bragg 30-yard line. Back at the 40 to receive it is King. Panthers are going to get good field position here. Harrion gets the snap, gets his kick away, and it's not a very deep kick. It's just across midfield. There'll be no return. The Panthers have 54 yards or thereabouts to go. If they're going to tie this game up, they have 2 minutes and 51 seconds to do it. On the other hand, the Timberwolves defense, who has played very well here tonight, other than that first play from scrimmage when they gave up an 89-yard touchdown run. Other than that, they've played well tonight, and that's been a hallmark of Fort Bragg as their defense. A little bit different look this year with the 4-4. But they're going to have to make it ha make it make it happen now. Here come the Panthers. 2:51 to go in the game. Noonan will run out of the shotgun. The spread offense. Two men left. Two men right. Noonan looking to his left. His pass is incomplete. Stopping the clock. Only a few seconds went by intended for King that time. Coverage from Josh Labou. Also Smith. It could be second down and ten. Well, McKinleyville. Although they haven't really put up a lot of passing yardage, they've men have got open, and Noonan has a, a strong and pretty accurate arm, so they certainly have the tools to tie this thing up right now. 14-7, 2.47 to go in the game. 
Noonan for the Panthers again out of the shotgun with a spread offense. He's back to pass again. Now he's in trouble. Now he's going to try and scramble away. He gets some yardage. Gets across the line of scrimmage before Reed Monson brings him down. Also Harrion in there on the stop. It's going to be third down. We do have another penalty flag on the field. And that could be against the Panthers. They are marching the other direction and with 2.34 to go in the game. The Timberwolves are going to get a little help defensively from this penalty. That ball will be now marked all the way back across midfield down to... This is one of those penalties where they mark from where the uh, infraction occurred. And since it was a passing play and the, the holding occurred well behind the line of scrimmage trying to protect the quarterback, the ball is now back at the 35-yard line of McKinleyville. They have to go 24 yards to get a first down. Second down. 14-7, Fort Bragg leads. Man in motion now. This is Gage Grace, the speedster, out coming to the left. And Noonan's looking this way as he rolls to his left. He's looking for the speedster. He throws. He's there. It's overthrown. And a wobbly pass at that. Actually, Gage had to slow up. He got in the seam. Had he continued on the post there, it looked like he was open. But Noonan threw a wobbler and a little bit to the outside. And it's incomplete. So third down at about 24 now. 2.15 to go in the game. And this is that point defensively now where you got to play as a team. Everybody's got to have their assignment. Everybody's got to come through with their assignment. For McKinleyville... You're looking for one big play here. Third down and 24. Spread offense. It's Johnson behind Noonan. He's back to pass. Noonan. Still time. He is hit and dropped. Tackled at the 30-yard line. As Jacob Richards came in and put on the hurt. Harrion also in there. And the clock continues to tick after a second. It's going to be fourth down now. About 30 yards to go for a first down. A minute 50, a minute 49, a minute 48 to go in the game. The Timberwolves leading 14 to 7. The safety for the Timberwolves is back at midfield. The line of scrimmage is at the 30, so that tells you something about this play. And now the referees have stopped action again, and I think we have a timeout. Fort Bragg has called a timeout. Fourth down and long. 14 to 7 is the score as Fort Bragg is... A minute and 40 seconds away from their first win of the season here, but I'd like to remind everybody to please I've seen stranger things happen on fourth and 40, you know, 30 some yards to go and at the end of a game. This is, uh, like I said, when everybody has to complete their assignment on defense and uh, really realize that uh, there could be no letdowns at this point. You've played this hard, come this far in this game. Uh, you just want to make sure you can bring it home. On the other hand, if you're McKinleyville, you do need a miracle. Miracles do happen in sports. But uh, if I'm McKinleyville, I would somehow try and get the ball in the hands of Gage Grace. He has been something in the open field. The other guy to watch for, the speedster that's uh, been prominent here is Tanner King. He splits out here to the left. But it looks like McKinleyville is going to punt this football. They are. They go into the punt formation and a nice spiral punt. There's nobody back to return for the Timberwolves. So it'll simply be down and it rolls all the way to the 20-yard line. And with about a minute 30 to go in the game, Fort Bragg is going to have the football. And they're going to have time to run the clock out. I uh, don't think they need to make a first down. I believe the Panthers have called two timeouts, so I think they only have one more. Again, my apologies. I don't have a staff, and we don't have a stat person, and things like that at the high school level aren't generally provided in the press box or nearby. So anyway, that was a 50-yard punt for the Panthers as the Timberwolves now have it first and 10, 21-yard line, a minute 30 to go in the game, leading by a score of 14-7. to seven. One thing, when you have your first game of the season, it's a non-league game. Uh, you know, you, you have to feel good if no one gets hurt. And uh, it's a good game. And so far, that's been true for both teams. The Timberwolves will probably just try and run the clock out. Richards takes the handoff from Ashby that time. The clock ticks down to a minute 20. But then McKinleyville 
we'll call a timeout, or we do have a timeout called on the field. It's Fort Bragg. I'm not sure why they would want to stop the clock at this point. No, that, there we go. The PA announcer has been corrected. It is timeout Panthers with a minute 20 to go in the game. 14-7, Fort Bragg leading here tonight. Saturday, 10 o'clock, on the stump, 19.7 on your radio dial. The stump. A minute 21 to go in the game. The McKinleyville Panthers, after the timeout, will try and get the ball back. Fort Bragg, at this point, I imagine that timeout, Coach Perkins told his offense, just hold on to the football. Just don't fumble the football. The exchange between the quarterback and the running back have to be clean and just hold the football at this point. Smith gets the handoff left side. Gang tackled near the line of scrimmage. Down a minute 14 to go, and McKinleyville will call another timeout, as I predicted. So they had, I think this might be their last timeout. I'm not sure. But uh, it's going to be third down and long. So Fort Bragg and McKinleyville will gather around their coaches one more time here at the end of this game. 14-7, to seven, Fort Bragg leading. McKinleyville, to give their coaching staff credit, the reason they punted the ball was they figured they could hold Fort Bragg and try and get the ball back rather than come up with a miracle play. And uh, we'll see what happens here. That certainly was uh, the wise choice in terms of game strategy. Jacob Rich Richard scored a touchdown in the second quarter. The difference in this game was a touchdown run, a nice one around the right side by Zach Smith. Smith's touchdown run is the difference right now, 14-7 to seven the score. So Fort Bragg has it, third down nine, the ball at their own 22-yard line. A minute 12 to go in the game. Richard and Smith in the backfield behind Ashby. He's got Wall out left and Palmer or Palmer out left, Wall out right, and Ashby's going to keep it. Sprinting around the right side, and he is dropped for a loss right about the line of scrimmage. That'll keep the clock running down to a minute now, 59, 58, 57 seconds to go. The Timberwolves have to punt the ball away and see that clock tick all the way down. Harrion will be back in punt formation. In fact, you might just let the clock go all the way down until there's a five-yard penalty at this point. We might see if that's what Perkins decides to do, or either that or he might call a timeout just so we make sure that no mistakes are made on this punt. This is right at that point in the game, 30 seconds, 29, 28, 27, 26 seconds to go. Both teams just standing on the field as the referee stands over the ball. Clearly, the Timberwolves coach, Roy Perkins, is going to call a timeout just before he'd get penalized. Or No, he waits for the penalty, and there it is. With uh, 14 seconds to go, there's the five-yard penalty. The Panthers will have 14 seconds to try and tie this game, and the Timberwolves basically need to get the punt away. I'm sure they've been coached to not allow a return during that timeout. In other words, punt it away from the guy, punt it out of bounds, just punt it somewhere in the right direction and then it'll probably be down to one or two plays for the Panthers at that point to see if they can tie it up. So Herrian will punt from about his own five yard line. He gets a snap. He gets the kick away. King's going to call for a fair catch. He lets it bounce and then it's downed by the Timberwolves at about the 44 yard line with 5.7 seconds to go in the game. Fort Bragg leading 14 to 7. The Panthers have it at the 44-yard line. Do they have a miracle in their bag? Let's see. Noonan from the shotgun. Gets a snap. He's back to pass. He's going to throw it downfield, and it's incomplete. Pass intended for Gage Grace, leaving 1.8 seconds to go in the game. Time for one more play. Pass is incomplete. Pass is intended for his buddy, number 88. And we have a penalty flag. Penalty flag on the play. I'm not sure what happened there, but... Uh, after that play, a penalty flag came flying in. 
And if this is against the Timberwolves, and it is, there's just no excuse for that. Here comes a 15-yard flag away from the play after it happened that's going to bring it down to the 23-yard line and, or 28-yard line, and this last play Penalties against the is a lot easier. That'll move the ball inside the 30-yard line. They still have to get a 28-yard touchdown pass on this play to tie it up and then get the extra point. They'd probably go for two for the win, I would think, but let's see what happens. So it's down to one play. Noonan takes the snap. He's back to pass. He's getting some pressure. His throw is caught by Gage Grace, and he is tackled at the 18-yard line, and that's the game. The Fort Bragg Timberwolves have defeated the McKinleyville Panthers in their first game of the season, 14-7. An exciting game here tonight. Thanks for joining us here on the rebroadcast on the Skunk FM. Thanks for watching us streaming on MendocinoTV.com. I'm Lindy Peters. What a game. The Fort Bragg Timberwolves have won their opener. They won the JV game 21 to nothing. An exciting varsity game came down to the last play. Fort Bragg wins it 14 to 7 for the Skunk. And for Mendocino TV, I'm Lindy Peters. Thanks for joining us.